Welcome to today's video on uh, the theory of liquidity preference. This video is absolutely critical to understanding uh, the business cycle. It's the second most important or the second most important graph that we will study in this unit, aside from the ASAD curve itself. So for the starting point of our analysis, we want to think about money demand. And the first question to ask when we think about money demand is, why do people hold money at all, as opposed to holding bonds, stocks, housing? Uh, the question here is not how much money do you want, as in, if you would have as much money as you want, how much would you want? Uh, it's how much do you want, how much of your wealth do you want to store in terms of money, so bills you're holding or money you store in your checking account, as opposed to less liquid investments like bonds, stocks, and houses. And one reason that you wouldn't want to hold money is that you don't get any interest from that money. So if you put money in, uh, just hold cash in your pocketbook, the government is not going to give you any interest. If you put it in a checking account, you will get interest, but it will be a very, very low rate of interest, so pretty much zero for our purposes. If you hold your wealth in other assets like stocks and bonds, you are going to get interest. You're going to get a real interest rate of R if you're holding the uh, risk-free bonds, and even higher than that because of the risk premium if you're holding stocks. So this tells us that you know money demand, that there's a good reason people don't hold all their wealth as money. It's because they want to get interest on other assets that they don't get on money. But there's also a good reason people do hold money. It's very liquid, so it can be used to make purchases. And this tells us that there's really two sets of variables that are going to influence money demand. The two sets of variables are, first, the interest rate. So this influences the opportunity cost of holding money. The higher the interest rate, the more you're not getting an interest because you're holding money. So this will, of course, then, since it's a cost of holding money, when R goes up, demand is going to go down. The other two variables re reflect the usefulness of money. Uh, P and Y, when you multiply them, tell us the nominal GDP. In total, the nominal GDP represents the total amount of money spent in the economy in a given year, so it's the amount of money that people needed to, to purchase stuff. So the higher nominal GDP goes, the higher Y and P get, the more you're going to need money, so the more useful money is, and thus, of course, money demand goes up. So these three variables are pretty much exhaustive of the, anything we're going to ask you about that would influence money demand. There's R, the opportunity cost, higher R, less money demand, and Y and P, these are the demand shifters. The higher nominal GDP gets, either because of prices or because of real GDP, the more money people are going to need to make purchases, so the higher money demand is going to get. Money supply is actually relatively simple. Just as in Chapter 30, we're going to assume it's completely set by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve picks a target money supply and sets that money supply and it's completely inelastic to the interest rate, so it'll just be a vertical straight line. As a review, I'm going to ask you now to pause the video and name three ways that the Federal Reserve can influence the money supply and then pick out the one that's the most important in practice. If you don't remember, this is a good time to look at pages 632 to 635. So pause it. If you haven't paused it, pause the video. Please do this question. This is important. Thanks. Okay, so now that you're back from answering the question, we'll move on to the next slide. Here we just graph money supply as stated. It's completely vertical. And then we have money demand, which slopes down. Uh, as interest rates get lower, the cost of holding money is lower, so demand increases. Basically the same way you can think about any other demand curve. The interest rate is the price, the cost of holding the money, and then the quantity of money Q is on the horizontal axis. So now we'll leave you with two questions. Again, this is the most important part of the video. Please do these questions. Answers are posted on the website.